Now before we get this video on the way, let's just specify that these specs aren't 100% confirmed. So don't take it, oh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as taking it with a grain of salt. Take it legit, but just don't quote me completely on this because you know shit can change and sometimes sources are BS. So enjoy guys. Yeah, I'm fucking right to the early What's going on YouTube? It's the Big K Cops 360 here, and with Intel coming out with their code name uh, Haswell E series of CPUs. That's right, bro. I'm talking 2011-3 motherboard socket. I'm talking X99 chipset. I'm talking DDR4 compatibility. We've seen specifications revealed for them upcoming 2011-3 socket CPUs, and here we go, guys. So start off. Um, we're starting off right now with the i7-5820K. This son of a bitch has six processing cores. Thank God. You see, the 4820K and the 3820, I believe, only had four cores and eight threads, obviously. So, it was kind of in a stupid position, especially during um, with the fact that you could easily just get a 4770K or 3770K, respectively, uh, for cheaper. And it was on uh, the cheaper platform, and it performed about the same regardless. So, the 5820 or the 3820 and the 4820K at the time was kind of in an awkward position. So, it's good to see this has six cores. It does have hyper threading, 50 megs of cache. Uh, it's got a core base frequency of 3.3 gigahertz and a core minimum frequency of 1.2. And it supports DDR4, which is good. So, default, I'm pretty sure the default DDR3, uh, DDR4, sorry, memory uh, frequency is 2133. So that'll be all good. And of course, you know, with the 2011-3 and the X99 chipset, you're going to be seeing lots of PCI Express lanes. So, yeah. There's no need to specify that. And, oh, just to preface, the three CPUs I'm going to talk about all have a 140-watt TDP. All the same. So next up, we have the i7-5930K. The, uh, the cream of the crop. The one that's, like, in a perfect position. Well... At least that was the case last year and the year before with the 4930K and the 3930K um, at the time because it had six cores. Um, it was just in a perfect position. It was at a really good price. It wasn't, or when I say really good, you know what I mean. It wasn't ridiculously uh, priced like the 4960X, which is like, like past $1,000. But it wasn't too cheap that made it look weak. But it's that kind of that $600-ish mark. And that made it good. And it had six cores. That was the big dog. The big deal. So you would assume that if Intel plan on making the 5820K. If they plan on giving it six cores. They would at least bump up the 5930K to, possibi uh, to the possibility of eight. Well that's not what happened at all. Because the 5930K still has six cores. Yes it does have hyper threading. So it's going to have six cores. Twelve threads. Just like the 5820K. 15 megs of cache. Um, 3.5 gigahertz base clock, so that's 200 megahertz above the 5820K. Uh, DDR4 compatibility and 140 watt TDP. So when you look at those two CPUs, they look very, very similar. I hope there's, I either hope these specs are a bit, they're not 100% right, but uh, they seem to be from a very credi uh, credible source, so I don't know. So 5930K, 5820K. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping there's a bigger difference than what I'm seeing, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's get to the big dog, the man, the beast, the warrior, the machine, the 5960X, the CPU that you know is going to cost past 1,000 US dollars. This son of a bitch has eight processing cores, 16, uh, 16 threads, obviously, because that's hyper threading, eight times two, 16 basic mass. It's got 20 megs of cash. Or cache, however you want to say it. It's got a three gigahertz uh, core uh, memory frequency, not core memory frequency, core base frequency, and obviously supports DDR4 like the other two CPUs. So pretty much, uh, this is kind of I don't know. Like I, I really don't know what to say. This is kind of bittersweet, or not even bittersweet is in the word. I think disappointing is kind of more of the word because. Sure, I, I reckon 5930K should have had 8 cores and maybe 5960X should have had the core count bumped up. I mean, like, 
I don't know what Intel's doing. I guess they don't really have much competition. Uh, AMD at the moment, we're still waiting for them to come out with their next uh, big x86 based CPU, which is coming out either next year or at least by 2016. So at the moment, Intel's just strolling on. They don't have any competition in the high-end market at the moment. No one is pushing them, so they're just going to release shit at a slow pace. If they don't need to increase their core count, they're not going to go um, waste the time on doing it. So, it's, I don't know. It's kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. Haswell is coming out. Um, I assume these specifications are legit. I'll put the source in the description. So anyway guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.